Hey guys, welcome back to another Watch Me Work. Today, this is what we're doing instead of our usual vlog. I tried to film a vlog last week, but honestly, it was a week of really bad headaches, maybe migraines, not sure. I did manage to get through my work days, but that was about it. So this is a regular new set on a client in salon. So nothing fancy, no wicked long lengths. This is really just in salon, regular day. I have cleaned her nails with 100% acetone. I believe she had a little coat of nail polish on there. And I'm coming through with my skiver bit from AR Nail Supply. The link is below. I love this bit for cuticles just clean up and I feel like it has taken my game kind of to another level with uh, no lifting. The one thing that I really don't want to do when you come back for your fill is file lifting. To me, that's a useless amount of time. It's a waste of my time and yours. I could go on for ages about lifting, but it, there's no reason why it needs to be there. Absolutely none. So, mind you, sometimes it takes a decade to figure that all out. But filing lifting is personally, in my opinion, just one thing I don't want. So I'm prepping her nail. I am using a medium ugly duckling file from AR Nail Supply. You can also get them off the ugly duckling website themselves. I am shaping her nail just a little bit and just buffing off the surface shine. So I think you can tell in the amount of time I'm using here with each nail how little I'm buffing. I am I am honest to God just removing the shine, but I am removing the shine 110 so I'm practiced at this I have been doing this for 20 years don't fret if it takes you longer than it takes me and if you can do it faster than you then I do it then that's also great you know this is um, my first client of the day starting her at 7 a.m. and I had a full day after that so I try to pace myself a little bit <laughs> shout out to the girls that start early and finish late right so I am prepping, prepping, prepping. She is a regular client. She likes to go four or five weeks. And sometimes if she loses a nail, she removes the whole set. It's something she's always done. And this is what happened this time. So she's been a couple of weeks without nails. She does manage to remove them without injuring her nail. So we've come to an understanding. I'm now cleaning her nails with a 99% alcohol mixed with I'm gonna say about an ounce of acetone, like I don't measure it, I just kind of mix it. This is very important. You can kind of see how I'm holding the wipe there. I'm actually holding that strategically. I want one finger, usually my ring finger, on the right side and my middle finger on the left side so that I am getting into those walls. And my finger below is pulling down. So somewhat pulling down on the side walls so that I'm getting right in there and I am visually checking them. I am using my protein bond because I don't believe in doing nails without it. I love protein bond. I've loved protein bond for a really long time. And I get this from Young Nails directly. I get usually a half dozen at a time and have them shipped. These forms I got off of Amazon and they are linked in my Amazon must-haves below. I love these forms because they're tough. Like, they're not flimsy and they're amazing. They also have a stickiness that is like beyond. The reason, like, I don't necessarily promote getting nail products off of Amazon. However, I do like to grab my disposables. I actually uh, am looking at a drill bit right now that I've just purchased off Amazon. It came the other day, so I'm really excited to get to the salon and maybe give that a whirl. Every now and again, if I have something small that is a disposable that I need to purchase, I do like to try it off of Amazon, and I always try to let you guys know. If it is a hit, I do link it below in my Amazon store. It's an associate, so I do, or it's an affiliate, so I do make Make some pennies if you do purchase anything so I do put the forms only on four I will do the thumb later sometimes the thumb just lays down and and it knocks the form a little bit typically not with these because honest to God they are so sticky and she has a drier skin type so they would have stuck to her beautifully but regardless I am laying down the first bead of acrylic again 
I've been doing this for 20 years. When I am picking up my pearl or my bead, I know exactly how it's going to act the second I get that out of the jar. I have spent a lot of time and I suggest you do the same if you're new or even if you've been doing it for a bit. Spend a lot of time learning the personality of your product and don't jump products around. Again, my personal opinion, but this is what I think. If you spend uh, time getting to know the personality of your product, then when things happen or go wrong or what have you, you can confidently say what happened. I know on a super rainy day, as it actually was here, or a super damp day, uh, this was pre-hurricane here on the East Coast, that my acrylic's gonna act different, but I know that and I can compensate. I feel like that is just so, so, so important to learn your product. And also learn your brush, learn your, like what you're wiping on down below the blue towels. I'm not just doing that because they're maybe inexpensive or whatever. I'm doing that because I really like the way that these towels interact with this brush and the way this brush interacts with this monomer. It's all calculated. And I feel like there's not enough importance put on that in maybe like courses or when you're in school the need to be able to get to know the personality of your product. The product I used before the Ugly Duckling acrylic was the CND Retention. I loved CND Retention. The only, the only reason why I stopped using it was because it was getting really difficult sometimes to get it from my local uh, distributor, Maritime Beauty, and I just didn't want to, I didn't want to play that game. I didn't want to get left stranded. Uh, because I knew the product so well, I, I wanted to continue that, so I just moved on to something that I, you know, in my mind I thought I would be able to get easier and uh, more consistently, and I got to know it, and that's how I stumbled across this. Really guys, I've only used two main core products in my entire life. Aside from glitter bells, you guys know I love glitter bells, but my working product in the salon the only reason why I stuck with this is because I know this. I like to know my product. If somebody comes back in and they've had some kind of lifting, which is not not generally something I deal with, or they've had cracking, or they've had breakage, or I generally know immediately what has happened. You know, okay, it's one of these two things. Uh, I'm able to pinpoint that and I love that. I am using the Glitter Bells number 10 brush. It can be found at the Nail Throne. There is a discount code as well as a link down below. I love this brush. I actually have been using it for a really long time and I have a replacement and I haven't opened it because I feel like this one's just getting settled in even though I've had it for quite a while. Some people use multiple brushes and that's cool too. I never have simply because I don't know, I guess I just didn't want to be responsible for more than one brush. I am putting on just a medium length um, oval uh, extension on this nail for her. I She didn't really care. She didn't really care what the shape was. I know that she does enjoy a coffin shape, but she also really pays a lot of attention to her sidewalls, and sometimes coffin doesn't grow out well for her. Sometimes coffin just doesn't grow out well for people in general. I know it's a nail shape that everybody loves, and a lot of people often want. It kind of goes in and out of trend, but it doesn't necessarily work great for everyone. Uh, and I do like to explain that to people if that's going to be the case for them. And for her, I know that when her sidewalls pull away at the least little bit, it bothers her. So coffin just really isn't going to be the answer for her. And that's okay. She's willing to take that because she um, trusts that I know what I'm talking about and I love that. I tend to come in with one pearl first, and you can see that I'm working with this, wiping, working, wiping, working, wiping, trying to get this uh, shape here, and it is because it's damp. It is because it's damp, and I picked up a bead, a pearl, what have you, that was maybe um, on the wet side, it wasn't too wet, or I would have put it down. I 
don't, I would rather waste product than put, uh, lay, lay a bead of product down that is too wet or too dry and just try to work with it or kind of just make it work. I'm not into that. A lot of times you'll get cracking, breaking. And I also understand that in a lot of schools, no, I'm speaking locally to me, but in a lot of schools, it is not, this kind of troubleshooting is not explained to you. And I think it's really important that it does get explained. There's a lot of times when clients will come back in with specific problems and, and you could know the answer to them, but, but you don't know where to look or you don't know the chemistry behind it. If you are someone that really wants to know, wants to be in the know, some of the Doug, not some, all of the Doug Shoon books, I swear by them. I taught out of them. I learned from them. I still have them at the salon. They're dog-eared like crazy. They have post-it notes everywhere. I still look through them. They are science. They are science-based. They are facts. They are the nail text Bible. I would... I would listen to him before I would listen to anyone else when it came to chemistry of the nail. So again, it's the Doug Shoon books. I like the physical book because I'm of an age where physical books <laughs> are great, but uh, I'm sure you can download it as well. So I only do show you one hand of this. I only show you one hand of most of this simply because I didn't want to bore you. But let's go ahead and take a look at the fact that this video is 33 minutes. So my fills, my new sets, are one hour. That is general for me. Sometimes I book every hour, not always. Um, I, I didn't for this, but it gives me time to get cleaned up and have a drink, especially when I started this early in the morning. But you do you, of course, with appointments. All that to say, if it's taking you two hours to put on a new set, don't worry about it. Take two hours. If it takes you less time and you have great nails coming back with no lifting and your clients are happy, then awesome. That is totally cool, but don't compare your journey to other people's. There's no space here for that. If you are someone that does want to speed up your services though, I can suggest that you film it. It doesn't have to be from this angle, but film your journey and look at it back and see, so you can see right here, I took a second before I came back to her nail with that product. I was probably looking at her. We were probably talking, um, but you know, I knew I, ha I know I have the time behind me to do that, but it doesn't hurt to watch back a video of yourself working just to see where you're stopping and pay attention to when you're filing because lots of times we stop when we're talking, when we're filing. Kind of, I don't know, to make a point, to look up, to look at your client. Um, anyway, just take note of that if, if getting quicker is something you want to do. So I'm really excited to film another vlog for you guys next week. Let me know if there's anything in particular you want to see. Like, do you want to see something that I'm not showing, like my cleanup or my teardown, what I'm using to clean with, my desk setup I've shown a couple of times. It's kind of about to change a little bit. Um, normally I get a new desktop quite quickly, like I trade it out pretty quick because it does get uh, ruined pretty good but I haven't because I haven't been able to get to my Ikea store. So, I ruined this form. What did I do? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's just one of those things. But if the form is not gonna serve you 100%, throw it away and get a new one. If that form is gonna have a kink or a crease or a pleat or a rip or a tear, anything that is gonna hold you up, throw it away. Forms are something I know that a lot of people have trouble with. If you are a tip only tech, that's okay. But if you want to be a form only tech, just master, you just need to master how to put that form on. That is 98% of the battle, how to get that darn form on. So practice it, practice it even on like your boyfriend, on, on different nail shapes, on different nail types, just practice it. I 
I don't personally use forms or sorry I don't personally use tips I wasn't taught with them but it doesn't mean I'm against them I still think they give a lovely shape and you know for me it would take me three hours to put on a set with tips for people that are used to working with tips it takes them the same amount of time as it takes me to form so never any shame Okay, so I've removed the forms. All, all 10 of the nails are now on. Again, we're just working with this, these five. And I'm shaping. So another thing you can do to cut back your time a little bit if you want to when shaping is practicing. So it's the step ahead. If you are practicing how to lay down your acrylic as perfect as you can, then you're not gonna have to finish file a lot. I believe you should always finish file. I believe there is never a time when you should not finish file. When you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. If you're too good to finish file, then, I mean, I guess that's good for you. <laughs> I will never be too good <laughs> to finish file. This is where you get to Make sure that your shape is perfect and make sure that it's blended into the cuticle perfectly. You can see me struggle a little bit with her here because like I like bump the file, like kind of look like a fish out of water here a couple of times. And it's because um, she has a, a generally stiff hand. So it, it's harder because those little micro moves that I'm trying to make just to tilt her finger one way or the other to be able to get into where I need aren't happening and when they don't happen the file slides off the nail so that's what's going on there Every now and again when a client is stiff I do stop you can kind of see me stopping sometimes I move her hand a little bit sometimes I just take my hand out of the picture and it's me kind of I mean no joke trying to get some feeling back in my hand right like it's it's me just trying to reset my own hand she has a stiff hand she's not doing this to me on purpose and and I know that and it's part and parcel right it's just something we have to deal with not every client is quite as movable as the next this being first thing in the morning sometimes makes it better for me sometimes makes it worse um, 
but it, it really is just something we have to deal with. That being said, it is also okay to ask the client to relax their hand if they're tensing and don't need to be. If you let go of them and they can relax their hand into the proper position and then as soon as you touch them again, it goes back into the stiffness, then they can help you. They can relax. Maybe they need to not watch you. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes they need to look the other direction. Sometimes they need to get off their phone because if they're playing away with one hand doing something else with one hand, then the other hand stiffens up. Everybody's a little bit different, but sometimes these are the things that you need to look for. Sometimes I give their hand a little shake, a little shimmy, kind of lets them know that I need them to relax their hand. My dust brush is from Air Nail Supply. I raved about them in the last Watch Me Work. I love them so much. Using multiple brands here. The first color I am using is the Nail Throne Gel Polish in Raspberry Gloss. The second one is an Ugly Duckling 166. It's the most beautiful mustard yellow. It's the only one you would probably ever need. The next color I'm using here is also lovely. It is also Ugly Duckling and it is number 111. It's like a dark teal color. Absolutely stunning. I love this color so much. The next one I'm using is Glitter Bell's Unbelievable Gel in Sweet Syrup. This is like a burnt orange color. I'm not gonna lie, I've been looking for a color like this for years and I'm so happy I finally have it. And on the thumb, we are doing Bold Babe, also from Glitter Bell's Unbelievable Gels. It's like a dark, really, really, really dark, pure neutral brown. So it's not really warm, it's not really cool, it just goes on as a neutral, dark, dark, dark brown. Almost black. Love it so much. We also come in with a On Vogue uh, glitter gel polish that I kind of put and make foil like around the tops and around the bottoms. That was a look she really liked and it just added a little bit extra touch so we did do that. I love those kind of metallic gel polishes like that because 
they can be made to look like foil. I only wanted a teeny tiny bit and if I would have used the actual gold foil, it's harder to control. So using the gel like metal polish and a small brush and then I kind of dab with my finger, you'll see that in a second, just to kind of spread it out a little bit because I didn't want it to be so saturated. That really just kind of made the day. And then I top coated with a, um, believe, uh, with a nail throne, a glitter bells, no wipe top coat from the nail throne. <laughs> I'll get it after a while. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed like a real day in the life watch me work. I love doing watch me works, different levels for different reasons. And this one is like pure salon watch me work. So if you have any questions, pop them down below. I will do my absolute best to answer them. All of the links are down below with any discount codes that are available. And I hope you have a great week, guys.